All right, welcome back to SOS. I'm BA. I'm sorry you can't see my face. This is my face right here. All right, this is uh, the Wes S. Hobo Blade. He sent Sippy Cup. Wes S. is one of my favorite channels, and I'm going to put the link in the drop down below. You got to go up to the top and click that thing and open it up, and there's a link there. Uh, subscribe to him. Yeah, he's a good channel. And like I said, one of my favorites. This is. Uh, this is going to be a unique sheath build. I'll be talking through this. I'm, hopefully, I don't take too long. The first thing I need to do, I've got, this is, I believe this is 9 or 10, in, 10 ounce, either 9 or 10 ounce leather. I'm not quite sure. But the first thing that I will have to do to make this type of sheath is I'm going to have to get this wet. And then I'm going to have to uh, move it around a little bit to see the connections to get everything I need. I might want to go ahead and cut it down so I don't have so much material to work with. I know I probably need my cutting wheel. I'm going to be using my cutting wheel right now. Uh, I'm just going to use a yardstick. I've been practicing just using a yardstick for most of these projects because uh, the wife took my uh, other, uh, my clear <laughs> cutter. Hey, that stuff's expensive. Like this board I've had for years and years and years, it's, uh, this stuff's expensive and you might not get a fancy cutting board like this when you start your project. Uh, let's just go ahead. It's cool to make this stuff yourself because it always turns out awesome. Like so, it's cause it's different, right? You know, everybody else is rocking like this fancy custom $300, whatever. And you can make something like this yourself. And just order the supplies from like tandyleather.com or something. Okay, I know I'm talking too much. Sorry. Yeah. The first thing that I want to do is cut that off. Just get that out of the way. And the next thing that I need to do now, <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, method to this other than you take this sheet of leather and just run it under your sink until you get it nice and wet. So you can start molding it around. When I start one of these projects, I get this idea that pops in my head, right? And I'll just start working with something to get what I need. And usually I can play music and just fast forward through these things. And you guys can all see it all come together. But you guys don't usually see all the struggles that happen in the middle of that. Okay, so we are going to... Let's just... Bring some of this together. Let's bring this together. I want to see. Because I'm going to end up needing a lip of this. And I'm going to bring this together like this. And then I can cut off the rest as I go. Because i got to make sure I leave the top wide or the blade won't come out. That's the problem you run into. All right, so let's do this. All right. So you're kind of doing a reverse instead of doing, now old this blade before I got started. I didn't want to get it rusty from having wet material on it. So I kind of have this idea down. I might need my forming tool. I might have to, let's use the flat end so that I don't, because if I, if I use any other end, it'll put that image into it. If, when it's wet like this, if you just barely press, you can have that design <laughs> and you don't want it. You're like, dang it, why did I do that? But you can see it puts a nice, crease in that it does it pretty easy and then for this one here I want to overlap that one now I'm going to get a little bit of dye residue or whatever left from old projects on the side of this but it's okay because once I dye it it takes all that out anyway and it might just add to the feature but let's let's see how much we need I need to pull this together so I see how much I need here Let's just pull that down, pull that one down. See, it put that crease in it. I didn't even mean to do that. It's just, it's wet right now. It's very pliable. 
and it'll take whatever image you press into it when it's wet. All right, so that brings that together and I can always cut all that straight, but I gotta make sure the blade comes in and out. Now I've got this image here. This is gonna have to come together like this. So now I know how much I'm gonna need here. And once again, let's just go ahead and got this set up. I want to use, well, I could mark the line and then I know where my material is, but then I won't have a straight line, right? So I would need to know exactly where I'm gonna be cutting when I start chopping into this thing. And I'm probably gonna need a yardstick. And I already know, because I can see by pressing on this, I can see the line. So what I'm gonna do now is bring this up. I'll bring this up to here and I can use this back end for my line for up here. Because it's gonna be the same exact measurement. You're gonna be cutting the same amount. Let's just go ahead and put this together here and Let's bring it in a little bit more. How big is that blade? There we go. Okay, so I am right. So basically just going to be folding them together and then uh, stitching them together, right? Something like that. That's my line. Now what I can do now is go ahead and cut that. Let's pull this out. And if you see any funkiness like you're going to see here, it doesn't matter because it's going to end up all one color when I dye it anyway, so it doesn't matter. I could have just laid down some saran wrap like I usually do, but it'll be all right. I've done this before, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've done it so many times. It's like, dang it, I've had accidents where I said, well, I should stop the project because I've already ruined it. And then come to find out, I didn't ruin it at all. And it was able to make it the same thing. Now that I've got this cut, right? Now all I'm gonna do, is I'll bring, hang on a sec. Yeah, I'm right. I'll bring this over to here. And you just marry the two together. Like that. And you can go ahead and flatten that out if you like. And just bringing them together, making it one piece. Just like that. And when you do this, now you're going to have to press it again because you want it to stick. So let's just roll it this time because if you start sliding it, it's going to lose its edge. This edge will go disappearing on you. You just want to kind of roll it out. Make sure it stays flat. This process usually doesn't take that long. This is, this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. It's just getting this all lined up into one piece. But you've got to roll this and you've got to make sure it stays folded. So once I get this folded, it's gonna stay folded. And then you gotta remember, you know, what kind of edge do you want for the rest of it? I can trim off any imperfections right now while I've got the chance. This little piece here can come off and you're gonna to have to figure out the blade. Because I remember the blade's going to be sitting like this. So you're going to want a triangle. So when this comes down, this will have a rounding effect. So you'll have to, in order to do that, we'll have to, when it comes together, it's going to be cut to where, let's see. And an angle like that. So you gotta you gotta figure that part out right away. It comes in and let's see, is this gonna have a rounding effect? So you're gonna have to make sure that gets stitched too. So you're gonna curve up like this. And then when it folds together, it'll make a point. So you gotta make sure when you cut this, let's see. Uh Go ahead and put my, this is going to have a fold, it's like a triangle. I could use my triangle blades right now. It should be something like this. So you're going to stitch this together as well. That. And then like this. The 
because at this point it looks like this, but once you fold it the other way, it looks like the other thing, right? That's how that works. Let's see. This. So now you just do a triangle, and then when it folds together, it makes, well, this will be connected, right? Once this is all connected and it folds the other way, it's going to be a triangle again. And you could round this off so it's not actually, you know, oh, I have a rounding blade. I know you guys see me use all these crazy blades. This is one of my circular blades. So I can bring this as far as I want into the project. You just fold it. This, bring it down, and then use your hammer, chop it. These are great. Let's see, now I have that. So that should do it for that part of the project. Now I gotta make a straight line up here. Let's use my steel. Let's just cut this in a straight line. I want to cut the whole thing because it'll make it nice and even all the way across. Well, I lied. Okay, you might have to work with that. All right. <laughs> the next thing's up. We can go ahead and, uh, uh, if we want, we can go ahead and dye this now and move on. But I'm going to be installing uh, some hardware so we might want to go ahead and do our hardware real quick to make sure before we move on but the hardware is going to be mounted closer to here don't get confused and start mounting it closer to there because this is going to be folded eventually so let's you gotta make sure you keep that in mind the whole time now for the hardware I'm just going to make some straps using the same exact size material just making straps this could be the top form I'll use that for the top form once I get closer to being done that can just be a form that goes around the top just for looks or you can use it as a belt slip you can slip it inside your belt or something I could make one of those I guess I cut that too silly but I'll, I'll use this piece when it comes to that part when I go to do the top slip, because I can do that at any time. All right. Like this, I need my scissors. Okay. Now I'm going to be making some loops. And I do not do what I did with all my hardware for that. I got to find that. That's usually why I stop the camera. I have bundles of these things. I keep them in my parts drawer. This will be good components right here. I can make a band for this to go around and just some nice D-rings. And I'll put these to the side so I don't need these right now. You gotta get started on these. Did I do that right? Yay, look at that. I actually cut them to the right length. And with that being cut, figure out what you need. And cut the rest off. Just fold it over the D-ring. And you're left with da-da. And you could use the other one if you want to get all fancy pants with it. Just take this one, stick it on the other one, and just cut the freaking thing. Boom. Done. See now? You got two pieces, and you got two D-rings. Guess what? They go on there. Now, we can... Back to the dying part again. You could... <laughs> dying. Let's not die. We're all dying, right? Metaphorically. All right. You could dye these, right? And you could dye these. You could dye all this stuff at any time. You can do it afterwards. You can do it now. It looks better if you do it prior to. But if you don't know where you're going with this thing, and if you don't know where you've been, I went to find myself. If you see me, keep me here. I'll be there soon. Uh, if, if you don't know where you're going with your project, then just stop and give it a couple of minutes of, of thought. Sometimes it's hard for me because I'm like, I want to make this video. And then I'm rushing and then I start, oh, what did I do? It's all ruined. Everything's ruined. I quit. 
right. So this guy, I kind of want to put it like right in here. There we go. Yeah, like I said, don't worry about that stuff. If you see anything funky on this thing, don't worry about it. It all goes away in the end. Just like us. All right. Dad, you want to get in there? Y'all freaking day ring? All right. Then you got to remember, well, what side am I putting this on? And it could end up left side or right side. I can, can this is going to be for my wife and I can never predict what she is going to decide to do. <laughs> if I make it for the left side so she can draw it from the right, she'll end up wearing it on the right side and drawing it from her left. So it doesn't matter how I do it. I always fail at trying to decide these things. And then you got to remember, oh, yep. Okay. So the stitch is going to be on this side. So you're going to need to put it facing this way. And to do this, just put it in there, put it on there. I could have used some much smaller, I know, I know, some much, some less thick material, right? Now, if you're doing projects out of leather, you need a tool that has a spike. I use just a straight up, it's like an ice pick, but it's smooth. It's like made of like, it's like chromoly or something. But it works great. And I need to make sure I leave a mark all the way through. Then I can sit here and do this. Or I could just run it over to my machine and have it do the hole. And I'm probably going to do that real quick. It usually does a pretty good job and it makes it even makes my uh, countersink, right? <laughs> Is that what you call these things? Oh, it's a countersink, man. Like that. And like that. But now I've still got to make these holes. Which I can use this for. When you're dealing with, like I said, 10 ounce leather. It's not that easy to punch a hole through it. It's like indestructible. Oh. There you go. Push these guys in there. Now I need this is iron wood, right? Iron wood. I use iron wood. That way I don't damage my tools and I don't damage my project. Uh, Chipper sent that to me. And ever since then, I've been using it for that. I was supposed to make iron knuckles or something, but this was way cooler to come up with this. Let me try and get these here. You got to make sure you get them on there good. Then use for something like this. It's so much material. You need to make sure that you use something to pinch that rivet together. Otherwise it could fall apart later. But if you do it like this, it'll never fail. You can sit here and wiggle with your thumbs to make sure it's coming all the way through. Now, I'm using large rivets. Usually when you see me making projects, I'm using medium rivets. But these are large. Because I'm putting three, <laughs> three sheets of 10 ounce leather together, if you think about it. Because that's like three sheets of 10 ounce leather. And I don't care that it's got a knob hanging off because this is supposed to be industrial. It's supposed to be strong and it's supposed to last forever. This isn't a project where I'm concerned about the thickness of certain items because I need it to be strong. And once again, I need to, I can go ahead and put my holes in this on the machine. If it's a little crude, I don't care. All right, let's do this. And when you go to stitching, make another thing to think ahead because if you're going to be stitching later, you could put stuff in your way. And if you put this too far on the end and you don't think about being able to fold that and stuff, you could end up trying to stitch this thing and be dealing with those D-rings the whole time. 
So you got to think ahead every time you put something together. It's like, wait, I didn't think about that. You ever have one of those moments where you stop and you go, dang it, why did I do that? I'm going to be dealing with this the whole time. Or you have to take the whole project apart and start over because you threw, you got all willy nilly and threw some, uh, threw some D rings in your way. Put these guys in. Now I got to, oh, take them. Let me use the machine again. It's fast, huh? <laughs> Every time I pause the camera, I was like, dang, that's fast. Don't I wish life was like that? I could just snap my fingers and it's like, all right, you have holes punched. Sometimes I sit in here like Tony Stark and I'm like, <laughs> oh man. I'm like pretending to talk to Jarvis or something. Like when I start a project, like welding or whatever. I like clap my hands or something. My, my kids will come in, who are you talking to, dad? I was talking to Jarvis. We don't have a Jarvis. Get one of these guys lined up. It's such a pain. Hang on. Let's widen those out. I ended up using this anyway. There we go. Oh. Now. Hey, it's not easy to put this many sheets of 10 ounce leather together. There we go. Now I can see them. Put it in there. I think so. Let's try it. If not, I'll start over. Right. If it doesn't work. All right, I got it. Okay. Now, so you can move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. And I can stitch this whole thing together, let me tell you. And you could stitch. Uh, most people get confused when it comes to stitching because they think it's supposed to be, uh, you know, um, stitched like laid flat and stitched and stuff. And it's actually the other way around. They just stitch the whole thing together and then mash the whole thing. So it's pretty simple. All right. There's this. I can add any extras in the end. And now I just need to go over here. And anytime I'm doing these uh, thick thick leather, I have to use this. I have to use the... I can't use a regular... So, uh, um, a cobble sewing machine or something. I always have too many problems. But this is what you would use to do your holes. And prior to... You have to know what side you're going to drill your hole. So you want to, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have it folded when you do this because you're only stitching one side. So you can lay this whole thing flat. And then as long as you know where you're going with this, you could lay a ruler down or just eyeball it like I do. Don't go all the way to the top because you're not going to be stitching the very top. Okay. You're going to stop just below it. Okay. And just go all the way through leaving a good amount of leather on the right side of this thing. So when you stitch it together, if it decides to get squirrely and want to, I mean, I've had situations where stuff just wants to tear. Well, if that's the case, just make sure you're prepared for that. So you save yourself some room in case you start having problems. You can always use scissors in the end to cut off any extra material. From your stitching projects now that should do the trick and that's all I have to punch holes now basically I'm going to be using my press and just punching holes I just use a smooth spike that's all it is it's not a drill bit and people always say oh man I didn't know I could use a drill bit it's not a drill bit it's just a steel spike that's all it is and it's put in the drill press you could even use a cordless drill or hurdy-gurdy <laughs> well, your weapon of choice you could sit here with this thing and just punch each individual hole if you wanted to. But that's not <laughs> going to save me any time. Now, you want to fold the project up because you're going to be punching through here and also punching through the other side. That way the holes match.
for this project I use fake sinewed and you can order that as well uh, I got a whole bunch of that stuff and usually you can you can tie this in a knot and then loop this thread through it once you go through one of the holes and catch it and then it could be your knot but what I always like to do is go through go through just like this if you can see it okay it's painful to try and pull it all the way through try and get as much in as you can and then you're going to go you're going to leave this piece hanging off and you're going to go back through and you can do side by side you can do two pieces and two needles you could do it like that as a saddle stitch or you could do it like this which is just a knife sheath so it should be fine and it's, the blade's not going to come anywhere near this. You don't really have to do a saddle stitch for this. And you'll find your hole. And you're tucking that other leftover piece of cordage out. String, thread, whatever. And it will tighten up and hold that thread in place. And that's all you have to do to get started. You can see that right there. I just tuck it in. And then it'll hold it and it gets really tight. And as you go through multiple times, it, uh, it fills all that in. Now you go one direction, you'll have a gap between these and you'll fill your gap when you're on your way back. On your way back, you'll, you'll be stitching from the other side. It'll just reverse on its own. When you come down, then it reverses and then you stitch the other direction and fill those gaps. Here's it going backwards. See what it's doing? I'm basically, let's see if I can zoom that out. There we go. I'm basically filling in those gaps just by going the other way. Now I pull real tight every time I put the stitch in. The material's wet, so it sinks, it sinks the thread in for you. So you don't have to do any fancy carving to do this. You just, this is all you got to do. All right, after you're done stitching, you can whack it with a hammer flat and you'll be left with this shape right here. And now I can slap some dye on it. It's gonna be super rugged. One more thing I gotta do and that's a strap. So find the longest strip you can find and cut as much as you can for your strip. These in four ounce leather. For this one, I just have to cut that line again. Sometimes I don't get every spot. I have to cut it again. Just cut one more of those. Right. Dye of choice, whatever color you're going to use, and just let it have it. No technique for this either. <laughs> just get the dye on the leather it's that simple when it comes to straps it's hard to set and with a small cotton swab and do this so i dip the straps you'll hear the bubbles inside it as it gets in the air pockets if you can hear that it's kind of hard to hear but i'll dip this and pull one part up and just start running it through you can really hear like the air pockets you can hear all the little air pockets in the leather filling up with uh it just it sounds like a soda and these big dots i put on purpose they're from the other project Just lay them out. Just let them dry. It'll add character if there's any blotches and stuff. It just adds character to the project. You could go around them if you don't want them there. It's kind of like this. And when they dry, they'll go away. Just like that. It's no big deal. You can leave them there. And then when you're done using this, just pour it back into your container. It's 
like that. I usually use smaller, this is just a cap. I use smaller stuff for, and it's got this arch piece I gotta do. I use smaller containers for stuff like this. So something like this is easy and I don't really have to dip something like this, but you can tell the difference right away from dipping a project but I had to do it and <laughs> had to get done. This because the strap is going to be looked at a lot when you're wearing something like this. People are always going to eyeball the strap, and you can't just go buy a strap like that. <laughs> you got to make it in custom length. Everybody knows who Sippy is, and that's Sippy's in the category is almost classified as a midget. You're that short. But <laughs> we we joke. I call her Shorty and stuff. You know, <laughs> a lot of folks don't know that or or how we met or how we got her, how she got her name and stuff like that. But I've shared it several times, and sometimes I do it during live streams. I talk about it. But uh, sometimes I threaten to put her like if she she's talking trash at the dinner table, I'll tell her I'll put her food where she can't reach it and stuff like that. But. Uh, And now I can just let this stuff it's molded enough and it should hold position pretty good I usually do this every time I let these dry I make sure that the item fits well Let me get this off here and it's the blade's still oiled I do that to make sure it doesn't rust in the process that's really nice so it'll hang it'll hang uh, off the side off the side here and you'll be able to just draw that out and cut if you need to and now I need to fit this on here and I had a unique way of doing that I want to be able to get this around here see what it looks like on the other side Put this up and just bring it in and I need to see how much I need to cut off here and then just like that and then measure it out. Get my. Let's see. I'm just going to cut here. I'm going to cut here. I just need to know where those are. Let's make my cuts. Let's set this to the side. And let's lay this out. Move these over a bit. Get my metal ruler. like this. Let's cut this other piece off. I could measure, measure by using this if I needed to. I could just set this up here and get a measurement, but they're going to fit just a little bit different here. And you could even fold it. Here's another option. If you want to get the exact amount, 
you could marry them together like this and just cut that off and you would have the same exact size right. and I'm going to use put this guy out use this and you could round this off really good if you wanted to you could just bend it up and set this in there like this and get a nice round edge by stamping that out it makes nice round edges for you it's so precise uh, I like that much better than some of the other ways of doing it now this probably isn't going to fit exactly the same as it did before but I'll still be able to get it to where it needs to be next step I need to bring this in and now that I've got it here I need to mark holes so I'm going to punch through it's just going to have a tie off right here and you could go fancy you know I will just for you guys I'll do two holes on each side let's do one and two let's do one and two let's make sure that one's in line with the other one two Ugh. did I okay I got the divot I gotta make sure you gotta kind of make sure there's a mark so you can see where those once you do this I would go ahead and use like a sharpie because you're going to be making larger holes I use 556 five, brass or 223 brass you can even use larger but whatever fits in your drill bit or your drill and just make these holes it's much faster or you could do I've got the tools I've got the tools I could just use this right and just do a stamp but it's much faster with the with the drill one way of doing this set a piece of scrap wood behind it like that and then make sure you've got plenty of room and punch your hole There's one two slide this over and this is just five five six brass it's in there makes nice clean holes every single time look at those nice clean holes perfect now the die the string for this is just a cut off piece I just drop it into the die and then dry it off as it comes out make a nice piece of leather leather cordage and just dry that off these old shop rag does a trick and now I got this nice cord I capped this before, <laughs> before I knock it over. And, uh, all right. Now you're going to bring this around. Make sure there's no imperfections again before you get started. And just lace up through. You Well, you could go in. I guess you could. And then that would probably look cooler, right? Just come in like this. And like this. Make sure they're the same length as you pull. Pull that side a little bit. There we go. Bring this in here. I'm going to get a little bit of dye on my fingers again. I just wash it off. Most of it washes off with detergent when you get it on your hands. It comes off faster on your skin than it does anywhere else. Just trying to keep them even here as I pull. Make sure that's tight. I'm gonna flip this, make it look better. Pull that again, that again. There we go. That makes it look neater. And bring this one up through here. Sometimes you just gotta spin it around a few times to get it through there. You might have to use pliers if you need to. 
this. These projects are always fun because I can see them all come together. And then sometimes in the middle of it, I come up with another idea. Something I should do. About to improvise in a minute. I don't get that through there. There's that. Give it a yank. Now let's uh, let's just give her a tie. And we could cross body that or something. You know what I mean? Like you could come from one other angle here, like up here, up here, cross back through, make an X on the back. This will be fine. <laughs> I don't have to get too technical with it, right? All right. Now let's just do flip through. This uh, this type of knot won't come untied, and it'll give the project a neat little look. I do this a lot with the, some of the leather work. I do these crazy little knots like this. It gives it a nice look, and you could cut some of that off. You don't want that much on there, but it gives it a nice little look, kind of a tassel thing to it. You can spin the knot around a little bit. There we go. I think that's about it for the sheath for now until I do sheen because I've got to do sheen on this once I finish it up it's a good test run for anyone out there who wants to build a knife sheath like this they're virtually indestructible I mean you could slam the blade in as much as you want there's no edges to cut so you don't have to worry about cutting any edges you're not cutting through that <laughs> it's 10 ounce leather and not not on your typical draw and cutting something but it's it's more for it's built this this is a design for speed and intensity. So when you're in a in a fight and you really want to you know cut something quick, this is kind of what the the sheath should look like. And especially if you're building like a a sheath for a sword or something like that, this would make more sense because it's rugged and it won't just fall apart on you. Anyways, but that's in place. It won't go anywhere. Also, this design it's got a little bit of lip here, so you can tuck it into your pants. You can tuck it into a belt and wear it like this. It'll actually catch onto the belt and won't fall off. And you can wear it under a belt if you needed to. But that's part of what that design is for. Okay, now I need to get started on this. First part of this is finding the right size. <laughs> and you just got to try them out a few times. That one doesn't quite fit it as well. That one's the same size. This one's a bit bigger. I don't know how large of a that'd be perfect all right now you got to get this where it needs to be and then you need to make a hole so i just need to make a hole real quick for that to fit in i had to bring my block back over here this is going to go like this there we go so you would do this and then go through the hole and up and then just bring that around and then, ta-da, we got that. Let's go ahead and flip this over. Mark a hole. Pretty rivet. We don't need a whole bunch of rivets. Just one will do the trick. I'm going to be using medium rivets this time. Medium rivets. Let's just go ahead. I like flipping them on the outside. That is the back end of it. But I like putting them reverse. That's just, I know it, it drives people crazy that I do it reverse, but I just like the way it looks. Let's see, that looks way cooler. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. It's the only reason why I buy those. That and also they're brass, so they pretty much match everything I work on. There we go. Don't get too crazy with it. That'll do the trick. Now you got to be careful with this leather. It'll stretch on you, especially when it's wet. All right, there's that. Now I need to figure out the holes for this thing. Is this about how long the sheet's going to, the whole thing's going to be? So right about here, I need to start making, I need to start making my holes. So I'm going to have to go make a bunch of holes here so that it can fit in there. No particular order. Made some holes. Now I've got to round off the end because I want it to look neat. This is the size I'm going to use for my cut. And 
now I've got a nice loop there. And from that loop, I can run that through my belt. Spring that up. And just flip it in like that. From that I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and just put it like this. Now I need to make a collar for this belt. It needs to be able to stay in that position. So I need to make a collar for that real quick. Or I could just do, yeah, you could do a whole bunch of different things for that. I just need to make a, take one of these and you just run it around so that you know where it needs to be. This and then this. That's a large piece. I just now noticed that that's, uh, that's really thick. Let's try something else. Let's get something smaller. There we go. Yeah, that's a lot thinner. I don't want anything super thick for that. Punch a hole. Make sure you mark what you need. There's your holes for that. Let's go ahead and slap some dye on it before we forget. It's easier to dye it before you snap it together. It's a lot of stuff to this, these projects. It takes a lot of time. It's the reason why I fast forward the video. Someone said, man, I missed the videos where you talk the whole time. <laughs> they don't understand that it's a really long video if I talk the whole time. All right, I'm going to set that to the side so I'll have some more dye when I need it, in case I need it again. So that. Now that I have that, all you have to do to squeeze the rivet for this is just put it together, slip it on a uh, steel plate. This is the one that I use for buttons and snaps. Ta -da. And if you have any excess material hanging off the sides and you don't like it, just trim it off. You could even bend it out and do it that way. So that, find the end of this thing and slip it on all the way down. That way you can move it around if you need to. If you're having problems with it. Slip that over the whole thing. Sweet. Yeah, buddy. There we go. That's cool. It's like a little belt. Now, I've got my adjustment section. I can move on to here. So I don't need adjustments down here. Let's go ahead and we'll do a couple of rivets in this one. Just because it makes it look cool, right? I'll do that to both of these. This is optional. You could use this for many different things. Let's go ahead and flip this around. Like I said, I like these on the outside. Sometimes you've got to redo the hole. It's all about lining it up. Two of these. Bring that in. The other side, real quick. Once I add the sheen to this, it's going to look really cool. Let's 
Seems I'm going to grab one more than I need. All right. About done. That's that one. And like I said before, you can just cut off any excess if you don't like it. I just don't like that section hanging off there. Do the same thing to the other strip. Take a look at it, see how much is hanging off there. See about getting rid of it. And then you just, and then you got this done. You should hang this right off of here. That should be the trick. Make sure it's like this, and just snap it on like that. And voila, and slide the blade in and give her a little test room strap. I'll pull this out some so you can see. You got your strap, and you would just sling it. And you can reverse this if you don't like the direction this is going, just unclip it and flip it the other direction. That's all you gotta do. So, when you make one of these and you don't like how it's turned. Or if you want it, you want it higher on your chest. You just tighten it up. You just add more holes, and you can tighten it up. It could be on your chest. It could be on your back. Be behind your back, and and different ways of doing it. And like this design, I just want it down low. I'll bring it down here so you can see. It just needs to be down low. So when you need to draw it, you just pull it out. <laughs> holds <laughs> holds pretty good, man. Oh, oh, oh pretty cool and see in the middle of that I end up coming up to another idea I use these all the time these are nice little tabs to hang we could put in these little slots right here so you can hold them in place I think what I'm gonna do I'm bringing this down here and I'm just gonna put one let's see make sure it's in the right spot so what you would do is since you've got your holes set up the way they're gonna be just pull it, pull it in there, punch your hole, run your screw through, just like that, and then screw this guy in. One more added feature, I don't have any more brass ones, all I have is the chrome ones. And someone might say something about that. So, oh, how dare you? How dare you use a chrome? Let's pull that through, pull that. Make sure it's back center again and there you go you got one more added piece to hold that in place and you can pull this over the top of that or you can bring it back down doesn't matter pretty nice little feature and that just one more added protection from slipping and coming unraveled or whatever getting the sheen if you're going to do this do it outside <laughs> it's it's a aerosol so it's it gets a little crazy in the house but adding sheen you could just smear it on or you can just spray it on like this pretty convenient if you guys enjoyed this this uh whole talking and show and tell kind of thing and if you want more of this let me know and i'll i'll do them this way it's fine they're longer but if you like them that way or the other i think most folks don't really carry the way but anyways sippy if you're watching because i know you're probably going to watch after the fact i love you and i hope this helps and that way when you take the kids out to the woods you got something to chop around with and uh, for those of you out there uh, taking care of people and doctoring folks up we love you and we're right there with you and god bless and take care